Hey programmers, welcome back. Let's keep practicing with loops with this B exercise. So if you haven't given this exercise a shot, what you'll want to do is definitely pause this video, go down to the description, hit the link, and then work on this exercise on your own, right? Give it an honest shot. And if you get stuck, come back to this walkthrough. And so let's go ahead and work through these together. And I'll start with this five multiples of. So I should create a B loops folder to work through. And I'll also create an individual file for every single problem over here. So looking at the first problem here, what I should do is take in a number as an argument and print out the first five multiples of that given number. And the function doesn't need to return anything here, it should just print to the terminal. So looking at the first example, right, my input number is seven, so I wanna print out the first five multiples of seven. So that's seven, 14, 21, 28, and 35, and so on. I have a very similar example in the case of my input number being three, right, I print out the first five multiples of three. So when it comes to strategizing for this one, what I should do is think about how I can establish like this pattern, right? So I know I need to use uh, my input number and I need to find multiples of it. I know a multiple is really just a matter of taking some number and multiplying it by another number. Well, let me get my function definition out of the way. So I'm writing five multiples of, I'm gonna take in my num as the argument here. If I think about the pattern, if my input num is seven, then what I really just print out is seven times one, seven times two, seven times three, and so on. So I just need like increasing uh, numbers from one through five, and that would give me uh, some numbers that I can multiply into my num argument over here. So let me establish that pattern. Let me create a for loop that iterates from i equals one, right? Because it looks like the first iteration is always the input number times one. I wanna go up to, and of course, including five, because like the problem says in its name, I want the first five multiples. I'll hit every number along the way. For now, let me just console.log the current value for i. So I'll run this, and this should just give me one through five, all right, building my solution up. And then to really wrap this one up, all I do is take that number i and multiply it by my input number, right? And this would do one times seven or two times seven, giving me that pattern that I need. And I'll run the second example as well. And nothing too fancy with this problem, uh, very simple, just noting how we can establish the pattern by using uh, just a regular for loop. So let's move on to this sum up to problem. So in this sum up to problem, what I wanna do is write a function that takes in a max number as an argument. And the function should return the total sum of all numbers from one up to the max inclusive. And they give us a nice example drawn out. When we call sum up to four, we should return 10 because what we do is add numbers from one through four, right? So in other words, one plus two plus three plus four gives us 10, and that's what we should return. So let me create my function over here. So I'll define sum up to takes in a max number, looks like, as an argument. So now that I have my function definition, let me just try to pick out any patterns I see in the problem description. So when we call sum up to four, I need to like touch numbers from one through four. And you could imagine if we called sum up to for five, I should get the numbers from one through five, right? I'm not gonna worry about trying to add them together yet. Right now, I just want to hit all numbers from one up to my max, right? So let me create a for loop for that. So I'll let i equal one and go up to max, and it should be inclusive with max. I'll notice, right, because it's four, I go up to and including four. And I'll hit every number along the way. Let me just test this, and this should just print out, you know, all those numbers from one up to max. So I'll try the first example, it should give me one to four. Cool. I uh, notice I'm seeing an undefined on this last line over here because this function does not yet return anything, right? Line 13 is trying to print out the return value of sum up to, and there is no return value yet. Well, I'll fix it at the very end. Uh, so far I have a nice iterative pattern where I can grab my numbers from one up to max, and now I need to work on adding them together. So I know I have to use like the plus operation, right? That should be obvious, but how can I manage to add everything together, right? How can I add all of the I's across all of these iterations? What I can do is before the for loop, create a nice sum variable and set that equal to zero. And now as I hit my numbers in my for loop, as I hit my different I's, we'll call them, what I wanna do is just add them into my sum. So I can do sum plus equals I. And that will have the effect of taking my current i, add it into the sum, but also change that sum. After the for loop, let me go ahead and return that sum variable, and we'll see what it looks like. Notice that we get the final answer of 10, which is correct. Why don't we really step through uh, this one, though? 
So I'll trace through this example and I'll track all of my key variables, right? So let's say our sum begins as zero. So we'll note that over here. And maybe next to the for loop, I'll also track my i. My i, let's say, begins at one according to the, the for loop, right? So my first iteration, what I do is I check, all right, is one less than or equal to max? In other words, is one less than four? That's true. So what I do is take my one and add it into my sum. So zero plus one gives me one. Next iteration, I increment by one. So now my i is equal to two. And I check, is two less than or equal to max? Is two less than or equal to four? That's true. So I add two into my sum. Right now my sum is one. So when I add two into it, it now turns into three. Right, and to that iteration, I increment again. So I go from two up to three. And I check, is three less than or equal to max? That's true. And so what I do is add three into my sum. So now it's six. And about on my last iteration, I increment again, right? I have four. And I check, is four less than or equal to max? Is four less than or equal to four? That's true. And I go ahead and add my four into my sum, right? So now my sum is 10. And technically, I would start another iteration, right? So right now, i is four. If I do i plus plus, now i is five. And I check my condition. Is five less than or equal to max? Is five less than or equal to four? That's finally false, so I'm done with the for loop. And what do I do after the for loop? Well, we just go ahead and print out, or rather return, the sum variable, which I said just contains 10. That's why we see it over here. So this is a nice little pattern, noting that we're creating our sum variable for the for loop. That way, you can add into it. So I'll go ahead and run this code. I get 10, 15, 30, and we're good to go. Let's move on to this no O's problem. So in this problem, what I want to do is take in a string uh, as an argument, and I just want to print out some characters. In particular, I want to print out the characters of the string, except any characters that are O, right? The function doesn't need to return anything, just print out to the terminal. Cool. So I know I'm going to use a for loop here using that classic string iteration pattern, but I'm going to need some additional logic to avoid some O's. So let me lay down my function definition. I'm going to take in the string as an argument. And let's start by just hitting every character of our input string. I know I need to be dynamic here because I'm not sure how many characters the string will contain. So I need to write that nice for loop where I start at the first index, which of course is index zero. And I loop up to but not including the length of the string, right? Like we always do. And then from there, let me start by just printing out the current character I'm iterating through, right? So I'm going to console.log string at index i. Notice on the first iteration, right, when i is zero, that means string at index zero would be c in this example. When i is one, that means string at index one is going to be o and so on. So this will have the effect of printing out all characters no matter what, which is close, but not exactly what we want, right? So maybe just running the first example, I print out code, but I want to avoid the o's. So I just need to add some conditional logic, right? I only want to print out the character if the character satisfies some condition, right? If the character is not an O. And so I can express that pretty easily. I can say, hey, if the character that I'm looking at right now, if it's not an O, then feel free to go ahead and print it out. So I'll run that code. There we go, and I'll run the second example. It should work very similar, right? So we're checking our condition as we go. And I'll want to maybe clean up my code a little bit. So since I'm saying this expression twice over, like string at index i, I'm going to call that a char. And of course, I would need to create that char variable. So I'll derive it over here and say char equals string at index i. I think this is a little cleaner, right? So I'm hitting every character of my string. And for every character I check, if that character is not an O, then I'm OK to print it out. And I'll run this code to make sure it still works. Code and school. And there we have no O's. All right, let's work on this odd sum problem. So in this problem, what I want to do is write a function that takes in a max number as an arg. And what it should do is return the total sum of all odd numbers from one to the max inclusive. So this should seem a little familiar, right? It's very similar to our sum up to problem that we did previously. But this time, I only want to add the odd numbers, right? And so let's go ahead and lay the foundation. And I'll start defining my odd sum function it takes in max. And like before, why don't I build this up in pieces, right? So I know I want to hit some numbers from one to max. So I can write a classic for loop to do that. Nothing fancy. So let i equals one go up to uh, and including the max. They tell me inclusive. So I'll run this as it is. So this will just 
quickly check if I'm correctly iterating from one up to 10 or one up to my max in general. Cool. So what I want to do is narrow this down to the odd numbers, right? I don't want all numbers from one to 10. So I'll use a conditional here. I'll check, hey, if my number divided by two is equal to one, that must mean it's an odd number, right? And if it's an odd number, then maybe I'll print it out, right? So I'm just console.logging to kind of debug my code as I go. Cool, so now I get all of my odd numbers, uh, very familiar to what they say in the example, right? I'm hitting numbers. And from here, now I want to have the effect of adding them together, right? And here's where you combine all of the logic, right? To solve new problems, I'm really just reframing how I solved my previous problems. I know that in my old sum up to problem, to add things together, I use an adder variable. And so I'm gonna adopt that same strategy here, right? Before my for loop, I'm gonna create that sum variable, set equal to zero. And I know by the end, I'm gonna return it. But hopefully along the way in that for loop, I add some numbers into my sum. In particular, I only want to add the odd numbers, which I know are captured right here. So what I'll say is, if i is an odd number, then take my sum and add into it the value of i. Right? And this should have the effect of adding only my odd numbers from one up to max. So I should see 25 and nine, and there we have the solution. So cool problem over here. Notice how we're just combining, you know, the solutions we use for problems previously. So do take away, you know, how we solve these problems as we go, because they're definitely going to be useful to solve harder problems later on. All right, let's walk through this string repeater problem. This one's pretty interesting. So in the string repeater problem, what I want to do is accept a string and a number as arguments. And the function should return a string consisting of the input string repeated the specified number of times. So let's take a close look at the examples to see what they want here. So when our input string is Q and our number is four, looks like we return a string where Q is repeated four times. That makes sense. Second example, when our input string is Go and our number is two, I repeat Go twice. And it follows similarly for this last example over here. And so I definitely you know, notice um, some sort of a repeating pattern here. I'm gonna need to repeat the string this number of times. So I'm probably gonna need a for loop to do that. Let's jump in and define this function. And so let me create a loop that just iterates this number of times, right? So I'll create a nice for loop, set i equal to one, and I'll go up to and including my num. So when i is going to be four, I get four iterations, right? One, two, three, four. I'll hit every i as I go. And what do I wanna do for every iteration? Well, I want to take my original string and combine it with like another string that I'm gonna eventually return. So maybe in the same vein as like our sum problems, we'll create an outer variable here and we'll say let, and I'll call it my repeated string. And I'll start as the empty string, right? So we're kind of drawing some similarities. Now we're not using a number, we're using a string, but I'm choosing the empty string, right? And so from here on every iteration, what I want to do is take my repeated string and concatenate to it, right? Remember, I can still use plus for strings. I just add something to the end of another string. So I take my repeated string and add to it my original string argument. And then from there, I'll just go ahead and return my repeated string. Cool. And so let's go ahead and run this, make sure it works. Now, why don't we step through, uh, let's say the second example a little more closely, but it looks like this is working. So we'll go ahead and trace through this. I'm gonna track my repeated string variable. I'm also gonna track my i variable. So maybe I'll kind of be specific here and say like i equals that thing. And yeah, let's step through it. So in the first iteration, I have i equal to one and I check, is one less than or equal to two? That's a true statement. So I run the code inside, which says, hey, take your repeated string, which is right now empty, and add to it str. Remember that str is just our plain old string argument, so I just take go and add it to repeated string. And then from there, I increment my i. So i was one previously, forgot to add that in, but now it's going to be two. Nice. And then from here, what do I do? Well, I check, is two less than or equal to two? That's true, so I take, again, my input string of go and add it into repeated strings. So now I have go, go. I increment my i, so now i is three, and I check, is three less than or equal to two? That is false, and so I'm done with this for loop. 
Finally, I just return repeated string, which now has go go inside of it. So fun little thing in this solution is we're using our for loop strictly for like the number of iterations or repetitions of the code that it gives us. We're not actually like using I to do anything specific with it, right? The I is really just for the sake of iterating. On every iteration, I just take my input string argument and add it to my repeated string. So now let's walk through this product up to problem. It should be very familiar. So just from the name alone, you probably guessed that this is gonna be very similar to sum up to. Uh, this time I wanna grab numbers from one up to the max, but multiply them together, right? So if someone asks for product up to four, you do one times two times three times four and return that final answer, in this case, 24. So nothing too fancy here. We just have to understand some math. Uh, let me define this function. I'm gonna take in my max, like always, and this is a few times now, you're gonna become pros in writing for loops. And I'll iterate from one up to the max. Cool, so this gives me all numbers from one up to the max. And now I want to have the effect of multiplying them together. So if I draw you know, patterns from before, I wanna create an outer variable that I want to return at the end. This time I'll call it product. And you're gonna to have to be very deliberate here. If I make product equal to zero, things are not going to work out, right? Because if I make product zero, I know I wanna have the effect of multiplying stuff together. When you multiply anything by zero, it stays at zero, right? And so instead, what you want to do is set it equal to one. Because if I have my initial product as one, when I multiply into it, I can actually accumulate a running multiplication, right? And so nothing fancy inside of the for loop. On every iteration, what I do is take my product and multiply into it, being sure to change the product, so times equals the variable i. I'll run this and we should be good to go on this one, right? Just a spin off of sum up to. Again, key things to watch out for, you want to initialize your product once before the for loop and then return it after the for loop, right? Otherwise you're gonna have some like partial iterations. All right, let's go through the last problem here and that would be our div by either function. So in this function, I take in three numbers as arguments. I have num1, num2, and max in that order. And here, what I want to do is print out some data so I don't need to return anything here. We're gonna need to print out all positive numbers less than the max that are divisible by num1 or num2, right? And so I definitely have some complex logic to establish here, but let's build this up in pieces, right? And so one thing I notice is all of my numbers range from one up to the max, right? Because they say positive numbers less than the max. So that means numbers one through 16. But among those numbers one through 16, I only print out certain numbers, right? So every number I print needs to be divisible by num1 or num2. And all of these numbers uh, satisfy. So let's start to tackle this one define my div by either. It's gonna take in num1, num2, and my max. Nice. Let me start by just hitting positive numbers less than max, right? So building this up in pieces. So let i equals one, because one is the first positive number. Go up to max, but don't include max, so they say less than max. And then hit i++ for now. Cool. So let me just try this first example and see if I have the correct iterations. So this should just print out one up to max. I'm not really paying attention to num1 and num2 yet because I want to make sure everything works as I go. So I'll run this. Cool, so I get one up to 15, including 15, that makes sense. And now I need to add some more logic. And so they say that I want numbers that are divisible by num1 or num2. So all matters of like divisibility should really remind you of the modulo operation. And so I want to reason about my number i, right? And so if i is divisible by num1, then it should have a remainder of zero when I try to divide it, right? So classic modulo pattern over here. So the way I interpret this so far is if i is divisible by num1, then print it out. So let me just try that as it is. So, so far this code should print out positive numbers less than 16 that are also divisible by four. Let's see that, right? So yeah, this is correct, right? Four, eight, 12. But I also want numbers that are divisible by num two. And here they say or, so think about logical or, right? Using some Boolean operations. This expression gives me a Boolean so I can or it with another Boolean expression. Now I basically just wanna repeat that pattern, but instead specify num two. So how do I read this code in English? Well, as I iterate through all numbers from one up to max, if the number is divisible by num1 or the number is divisible by num2, 
then print it out. So with that addition, I think we have solved div by either. Nice, this looks good. Let's try the second example just to be safe. So I should get five through 15 over here and there it is. All right, so that was our full walkthrough for this B exercise for loops. Uh, definitely make sure you have these problems down pat. It will get harder in the next video, I promise. And what you wanna do is have total confidence in solving these on your own, right? So use these walkthroughs to get to that level of understanding where you really have like total ownership of these problems. And what you wanna do is not settle for only partial understanding, right? If you wanna get good at programming, it's about not missing a step as you go. So with that, I'll see you in the next one.